Greetings. Today we're going to try connecting up the TEA 5767FM module. Here, this little green square that you see here is the actual module itself, but it's um, a surface mount device and it's incredibly difficult to solder. I didn't have much success just trying to use one of these by itself. For a little bit more money you can get one of these modules which comes uh, with the board on it and it comes with a handy loudspeaker or earphone connection, antenna connection, comes with a little um, extending antenna, little telescoping antenna, and the main connections that you need which are breadboard friendly. And also on here there's a little audio amplifier which makes the sound coming out of it quite loud. So let's uh, get started and build this on a breadboard. Okay, so let's take a look at the schematic here. You can see that it's fairly simple. You need uh, some kind of an Arduino board. I used an Arduino Uno for this. And of course you could just use the Atmega chip itself if you wanted to set it up on a breadboard with a crystal and so on. It's just easier for experimentation to use one of these pre-configured boards. Here we have the TEA5767. <clears throat> I'm not showing the uh, audio and uh, antenna connections here, but I'm showing the connections to the Arduino. So it's pretty simple. You just have VCC and ground and then the SCL and SDA connection. A note that you need a couple of 4.7K pull-up resistors tied to the 5 volt line. We'll supply 5 volts just from a power supply. And over here we have a rotary encoder. So you need a rotary encoder. I've arbitrarily picked digital pin 7 and 8 for this. And notice that we have a couple of 10K pull-down resistors on these pins. So that's it. It's a really simple test circuit. And um, when I set it up and I show you, I will connect a, a headphone or a speaker to this so that we can hear it. So where do you source the TEA5767 radio module? Well, you can get it cheap from the Banggood website. This here is the module without anything else. And remember, if you're going to get this, that uh, you're going to be dealing with surface mount soldering and it doesn't come with the amplifier and the easy connections. Here's the module that I used. And you see if you get 10 of them, they're about $6 each. It's really not that expensive. You can also buy a single one if you want. They have them on sale in single quantities, but they're slightly more expensive. Okay, so that's where you get one cheap. Okay, so let's take a look at the Arduino software to run this. We need to include this library, which you can get from GitHub. And you need this statement here, which makes it work with the library. Well, to start with, we just have some ints that uh, give us the state of the encoder switch. And uh, we're also defining that we're connecting to pin 7 and 8 of the Arduino. And I'm going to set an initial frequency value of 99.1, which happens to be a strong FM station near me. We'll do a serial begin so that we can look at the frequency as we adjust it on the serial monitor. And Radio dot set frequency is the command which sets the radio to the frequency value which we've set here is 99.1. We're doing a couple of other commands here, turning on, on noise cancellation and stereo and uh, setting muted to false just in case the radio is muted. And we're defining our pins 7 and 8 as inputs. Now I come down here in my serial in my void loop I'm going to print out the frequency uh, value frequency is equal to frequency value in the monitor window so that we can see that going on I'll show you that in a minute 
Here it is here. It's set right now for 99.1. And uh, we're going to start by re reading the state of these pins on the rotary encoder. So the way the rotary encoder works, and you can look up many tutorials on YouTube and so on, is that it has two uh, connections which connect to the center positive as you turn it. So um, if you turn it one way, first the, we'll call it the first pin, the A pin, becomes high or 1, and the B, the B pin stays at 0. Now as you, as you turn it further, both of these pins become high. So the connection is such that it first contacts the A, and then the A and B, and then the B by itself. If you turn it the other way, the relationship is reversed. So what we're doing here, we're saying if we see the A state go high but the B state is zero, then we know that we're turning in a certain direction. We're turning clockwise. And we're saying that while uh, the rotary encoder has both A and B high, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to stay in this loop and we're going to keep reading the state. But once we, once we exit from this, we go to the next line here, which adds 0.1 to the frequency. And uh, the standard spacing for commercial FM is 0.1 megahertz or 100 kilohertz. We also constrain the frequency to the commercial range of 88 to 108. And you'll notice here that I have a statement that if the frequency goes above 108, go back down to 88. So basically what this means is that you can't just turn above the above the frequency range and uh, be in nothing space. So basically, once you hit 108.0, it goes back down to 88.0. And then we set the radio to the new frequency. And then we do the reverse in the next bunch of statements here. We won't go through it in detail, but here we're saying if the B pin is equal to 1 and the A state is 0 and so on. And here in this case we subtract 0.1 and again, we constrain the frequency, and if the frequency goes below 88.0, we go back up to 108.0. I'll bring the uh, monitor window over again here, and I'm going to turn the rotary encoder, and you're going to see the frequency changing. So here it is changing as I turn the rotary encoder, and it's quite smooth. It works well without any glitches. We don't really need to use interrupts here. And I'll go down... And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of the range, and you'll see that when I hit 88.0, it'll go back up to 108.0 to make sure that we're not going into uncharted territory. So here we are. We'll go down to 88.0 and back up to 108.0. So that's basically how the software works. Let's take a look at the radio in operation. One last small cor correction on the software. I should have had this include wire.h and wire begin statement in there. I accidentally delete them earlier. Anyway, I will put them in the, uh, the final copy of the software for you. And here we go. I have the radio set up on the bench with no computer connected. And I've put in a little connector so that I could route it out to the loudspeaker and it's actually quite loud. I'll bring the microphone closer so that you can hear what it sounds like. A name change may seem like it's actually quite loud.